Hello everyone, I'm Ankita Roy, a PhD candidate at the University of North Texas. I'm researching in additive manufacturing of uh, metals, particularly in LPBF and DED systems like steel, aluminum, high entropy alloys, and titanium. In this video, I'll walk you through one of my recent work that looks into the fascinating world of additive where metals are built layer by layer using laser at every single melt pool tells its own story of solidification, transformation, and stresses. My recent paper published in Additive Manufacturing is titled Deciphering Mechanical Heterogeneity of Additively Manufactured Martensitic Steel Using High Throughput Nanoindentation Combined with Machine Learning. It's a long title, but to simply put it, it's understanding how repeated melting and rapid solidification lock in different levels of strain within, the, uh, within a single additively manufactured material. These locked up strains come from phase transformation and ras rapid solidification signatures inside each of the melt pool. And together they define how the printed steel behaves under stress. So first of all, I want to show you how does the microstructure of a DED printed steel looks like at various length scale when the laser powder melts the powder and as it solidifies a new layer is added on top of it. So the material experiences multiple thermal histories. As a result of this multiple thermal histories, we get a strain at different length scales. So at macro length scale, as you can see in this image, the residual stresses between the layers, uh, uh, the residual stress arises from the stresses in between the two layers. At micro scale, the dendritic structures uh, form inside within the each melt pool, which leads to another set of uh, residual stresses. And at nano scale, the tiny segregations Dislocation contributes to the stresses at nanoscale. So in short, a single printed block of steel contains a whole hierarchy of stresses all interacting with, with each other. Understanding these stresses uh, and the patterns is critical if we want to design a 3D printed steel that are not only reliable but are also strong. To capture such complex behavior, we wanted to use high throughput nano indentation. Imagine creating a 2000 point mechanical map across several melt pool. It's like taking a mechanical fingerprint of the material from the bottom to top of a build across several melt pools. But here's the challenge. With so much data, manual interpretation becomes impossible. So we combine this experimental mapping with machine learning algorithms like decision trees, support vector machines to automatically detect the pattern and classify the different kinds of mechanical responses. So what did we discover? At the melt pool level, we found periodic variation in hardness and increases from bottom to top of the pool and drops again at the top of the melt pool boundary of the next one. This periodicity mirrors the solidification strain pattern. The bottom of the melt pool is relaxed, while the top, which solidifies at the last row, is the maximum deformation of because of the phase transformation from austenite to martensite. To better understand where all these trends come from, let's look at the solidification sequence shown in our schematic. Here, the first cooling cycle, the melt pool, begins to solidify with the formation of delta ferrite phase along the boundary. At the early stage, there is little to no strain because the solidification front is still surrounded by a lot of liquid metal. So the material can shrink freely or expand. But at the end of the solidification cycle, the, ma the material carries a mixture of residual and re relaxed strain which is shaped from the entire sequence of delta ferrite, austenite, and martensite. And that's why it drives the mechanical heterogeneity we ob observe experimentally. At the microstructural level, we observe that the primary dendritic arm spacing becomes finer towards the top of the melt pool, which tells us the cooling becomes slightly faster. Finer dendrites restrict the formation of martensitic lats, trapping more dislocation, and that's why the upper regions are harder and are much more stressed. And when we zoomed into the nanoscale, individual indentation curves show distinct behavior. Some of these smooth, some of these uh, curves are smooth, while the others display pop-ins. The pop-ins are the little jumps which you can see. Uh, in each of these graphs, which indicate that the dislocation avalanches are local structural ar arrangement. These pop-ins became the key to link in the mechanical responses to the microstructure. To make sense of this complexity, we train machine learning models on the indentation data. Each curves with the number of pop-ins pop and load to depth ratios. We use, to we use this to classify the microstructure from which it, it was derived. 
from which these curves were derived. And here's what we found. Matrix regions which had smooth curves mean there was a lot of pre-existing dislocation so that it could deform easily. The segregation channels showed single pop-in where the deformation starts abruptly due to locked up strain and the interfaces between segregations and the matrix where, uh, where the interfaces between the two show multiple pop-in signaling dislocation bursts across different phases. Machine learning helped to, to turn the thousands of seemingly random indentation signals into structured data where understanding of this strain is concentrated and how the different regions of steel de resist deformation. So what's the big picture? By combining analytical model, high throughput nano indentation, machine learning, we developed a framework to decode how internal strain fields evolve and influence mechanical performance of 3D printed steel. So if you like this work, please like, share and cite my paper, or you can even scan the QR code to access it directly. Thanks for watching. I'm Ankita Roy from the University of North Texas. We'll see you in the next video. Thank you.